come again with some more experiments in the remarkable forces of magnetism. And I showed you last time how to do, how to make a magnet with a piece of magnetic ore or magnetite by stroking it in a very special way. But there are other ways of making magnets, and I'll come to that in a moment. But first, our new visitors. Will you identify yourself, Stephen? Stephen Heary. Stephen Heary. Stephen Heary. What? He how do you spell that? H-E-A-R-Y. That's Irish? Yes. Well, that's a good Irish name. And yours? Joseph Spano. Joseph? Spano. Joseph Spano. That's a good Italian name, right? Yes, so we've had representatives of different nationalities here, haven't we? Very good. So now I'm going to make a magnet in a very strange and uncommon way. Let us imagine, Stephen and Joseph, that this is an iron rod, which, as we say in the business, has no magnetic history. You see, it's never been magnetized. Do you understand? Now I would take the bar like this, and then take a hammer, and you remember in the other uh, uh, program, we found how uh, the piece of iron ore would line itself up in the field, indeed how a compass needle is. So, if I take this iron bar and hold it in the magnetic meridian of the earth in this studio, and then dip it a little, for a reason that you will have to uh, talk about with your master in science, hold it so, and hit it with the hammer, I would find that I have made a magnet out of it. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. Doesn't that sound like mysticism, right? Yes. And as I am given to say, if I did this in my native New England, Stephen, you know, where in Salem, Massachusetts, there were witches, you remember, who were carted off to the stake? Don't you think they would cart me off to the stake and burn me as a witch? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? I hold a bar, tip it a little bit, and whack it with a hammer, and then say, hocus pocus, dominocus, it's a magnet. This is fantastic, because I am utilizing the forces of the magnetic field of the Earth. So this is a magnet. Indeed, let's see. I don't know what the north-south direction is in the studio, because the compass needle is too much disaffected by magnetic things around, but watch. Watch. Oh, it is! Did you see it push that away? Which leads me to say that the only test of whether a thing is magnetized is not attraction, but rather repulsion. Repulsion is the only test as to whether a thing is magnetized. Watch it again. Well, it's moving a little too much for my purpose. But notice, is it not noticeably pushing that needle away? So repulsion is a very, uh, is the criterion for answering the question, is the bar magnetized? So, stroke it with a magnet. ma magnetite, smack it with a hammer. Now there's a third way which I'll describe on the blackboard. Supposing I have an iron bar or any magnetizable stuff, but isn't iron the cheapest and easiest to get, and then I wind a coil of wire around it, wind a coil of wire around it, and then connect, connect the coil of wire to a battery. You know, like you have in your automobile, right? Six-volt batteries, right, in the automobile? If we connect the ends of this wire to the battery and pass a current through the wire, an astonishing thing happens. The bar becomes magnetized. And depending upon the direction of the current in the wire, this would either become N and S or the other way around. And I'm going to show you that. So let's go down to the remote table where we have an iron bar. Yes, down further, if you will. Here is an iron bar, and do you see I've wrapped a coil of wire around it in a very crude and simple way, and one end of the wire is connected to the battery here, yes. and Mr. Anderson is going to connect the other end down there, but before he does that, let's look at these nails. Now watch, watch. Well, it is a little magnetized, isn't it? Because we have already been playing around with it, and we would say in physics that this has some magnetic history and therefore it's not a very good thing to work with because, you see, it, it fouls up our operation. But let's, let's see how strong it is. I'm going to put that nail next to that nail and uh, let me see if I can pick up. Well, not quite. Now, Mr. Anderson, if you will close the circuit. Aha! Uh -huh. Do you see it's a stronger one, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it? Yes, it's a... Oh! Disconnect. 
Feel, feel the wire. Feel the wire. What do you feel? It's hot. It's hot, of course. So we have learned here that an electric current has a certain effect on the conductor that carries it, and that's what? Heating effect, right? Yes. But have we not made a magnet out of that? Yes. Yes. And incidentally, would this not be properly called an electromagnet? Yes. So that when we disconnect the current in the circuit, the magnetism uh, falls off somewhat. But I want to show you that the bar, if it is of the right kind of stuff, still possesses some residual magnetic property. Watch it now, watch. Do you see it does? Yes. Do you see it does? I think that's wonderful. Look at that. This is fantastic. How long will that uh, magnetic last for? Ah, oh, that's a very good question. It depends upon the treatment that the iron rod gets. If you abuse it, that is, smash it around. Do you remember before I showed you how to make it? Yes. Well, indeed, if I held it at right angles to the Earth's magnetic field and hit it, it would very likely lose its magnetism. Yes. So isn't this a wonderful thing to discover? How to make a magnet. Now, let's go back here to our home base. Oh, thank you. Notice, do you not discover that it's easy to step on that line and strangle yes. me? Yes. Here I have a question. Here is an iron bar, an iron rod, and do you see I have cut some notches in it yes. so it is easily broken into pieces. Yes, yes. Now supposing I make this a magnet. Excuse me. Supposing I make it a magnet. Here is a horseshoe magnet. Yes. I could make this a magnet with the magnetite, but I can make a better one out of it like this. Watch me. Okay, so let me show you on the board what I've done. Here is a bar, and I have magnetized it. Yes. Would it not have some such polarity, perhaps? Yes. Right? Now, supposing I break a piece off. Do you see I've broken a piece off, yes. right? Yes. This would be imagined as follows. Right? Yes. What would I discover, do you know? That uh, the other end would become a north. Again. Uh, which end? The Down end. here? Yes. Correct. And how about this? Uh, that would... So, that angle would right? south. So if I broke it into a hundred pieces, would I not get a successive array of yes. smaller magnets? Yes. Right? Yes, yes. The question now to be asked is this. Supposing this first magnet that I had was so strong. I don't like that word, but you get the idea. Yes. By strong, we mean how it would give rise to an effect at a certain distance. If that magnet is so strong and I cut it into pieces, how would the strength of the separate little pieces compare with the original? Isn't that a good one, huh? huh? How strong then is this piece magnetically compared with the original? I leave that as a question for you to explore. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am told we are nearing the end. You see that man out there? He tells me, eight minutes gone. Yes. I have a letter from a little man, seven years old. It's about half your age, isn't it, Joseph? Yes. Dear Professor, I have used a box of matches for the experiment with the bottle and the eggs. I think that's one. He used a whole bo box of matches, Anderson. Isn't that wonderful? So, ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom, the records to the school and the books on milligrams to my colleagues here on the program, and we shall have more another day. Thank you very much and you for being with us. Did you have fun? Yes, sir. And are you not agreed that magnetism is a wonderful thing to explore? Yes, sir. Yes.